The infamous BF-109Z is a rare premium fighter for Germany in War Thunder. Let's check it out. On the surface, the BF-109Z is exactly what it looks like. Two BF-109F airframes grafted together with a center wing section and a shared horizontal stabilizer. The Z in the designation is short for Zwilling, which just means twin. Despite being pretty well known among aviation enthusiasts, the history of its development is a bit more obscure. The project began in 1942 with the goal of producing a somewhat flexible design that would be capable of performing bomber interception and possibly light ground attack at the same time. The troublesome performance and shortcomings of the ME-210 left Messerschmitt looking for backup alternatives, and the idea of grafting two BF-109s together seemed like a relatively low-risk approach that might also reduce production tooling and development costs by reusing existing machinery and design elements that were already proven in the BF-109 series. The first prototype was assembled during 1943 and was nearing completion when it was damaged beyond repair during an Allied bombing raid before its first flight. The project was officially cancelled, but according to a few sources, the work continued in an unofficial capacity and at a greatly reduced priority. The next year, a second prototype was supposedly started, which was based on the BF-109G instead of the F model, and incorporated changes to the armaments and some structural updates. I wasn't able to find much confirmation in primary sources about the second prototype, and I generally consider it to be more rumor or urban legend, but sometimes the plane is mentioned as having two prototype versions, so I figured I'd elaborate a bit on the point here. In the end, the BF-109Z never flew, and serves as an interesting footnote to the story of the BF-109, rather than getting its own chapter. What we get in War Thunder is the BF-109Z, a premium German fighter in rank 4 at battle rating 4.7. This is a pretty rare vehicle, which was originally part of a premium pack in 2018, then removed from the store, and is occasionally made available again on the store, usually for just a day or two at a time for special events. The BF-109Z is armed with four 30mm MK-108 cannons as its primary armament. Two fire through the engines, and two more are in underwing pods out on the wings. Having guns all of the same caliber and ballistics makes aiming a little easier since you don't have to worry about different levels of ballistic drop or anything, but having all of the weapons so far off the center line means that you might have to think about using gun convergence a bit more than with, you know, similar tier German aircraft that usually have a good chunk of their firepower pretty close to the center of the plane. The ammo belts are all pretty decent, and my personal preference is the night belt. This is just a solid run of the exceptionally good Minengeschoss tracer rounds, which are pretty easy to aim and pack an enormous punch. One good direct hit will bring down a fighter, and they do enormous damage to bombers. The 109Z can also carry a loadout of a single bomb mounted on the center line. This isn't a huge weapon, but it can provide the chance for attacks of opportunity even though it doesn't really make the 109Z into a dedicated multi-role aircraft. The flight performance of the 109Z might end up being pretty much what you'd expect from a twin-engine fighter like this. The rate of climb is okay, and it has a respectable acceleration in level flight, as well as a maximum speed a little over 700 kilometers an hour. Dive performance is okay, but if you redline the plane, the controls lock up really hard, so be careful if you're going down from high altitude. The overall maneuverability of the plane depends heavily on both your altitude and your speed. The 109Z does its best work above 3,500 meters and above 500 kilometers an hour. 
the closer you are to those numbers, the better your maneuvering performance will be. And the plane gets kind of a bad reputation as being really sluggish in air combat, but in my opinion, that's just because most prop-tier combat in War Thunder takes place down close to the ground at lower air speeds. One special note, the plane's rolling rate is really bad overall, regardless of your flight situation. So it actually ends up being pretty easy for opponents to jink off your aim in a horizontal plane at really close ranges, so be on alert for that. Flying the BF-109Z into air battles mostly depends on the game mode. In arcade battles, which is what most people are flying in this BR range, the aircraft's performance is much more forgiving, and you can be a bit more effective in dogfights than you can in realistic battles. Speaking generally, since the plane's performance is skewed towards higher altitudes, side climbing out to try and intercept bombers at the start of a match is usually a pretty solid move. And honestly, the 109Z is a pretty damn good interceptor, given its enormous forward firepower and its credible high-altitude performance. The 109Z is kind of vulnerable, though, and has a tendency to light up pretty easily from tracer rounds, so competent defensive gunnery from bombers is something to be careful with. Now, the dogfighting potential for the 109Z, well, it's just not great. The vast majority of single-engine fighters are just going to dance all over this thing, and in realistic battles, you don't have any lower-tier aircraft to pick on like you would in arcade battles as people are cycling through their lineups. Out of all the planes I've reviewed, this was really one of the most extreme examples of an aircraft giving completely different results in arcade versus realistic battle game modes. Now you can fly this out as close air support for ground battles. It's one bomb doesn't exactly make this a multi-role aircraft, though, especially considering that you have to just blind toss it. On the few occasions I fly the 109Z out as close air support, I generally use the bomb as an attack of opportunity. Maybe I get something, maybe not. Then I try to just patrol around looking for other aircraft to attack. Again, it's just not a multi-role fighter. Visually, the 109Z is a really unusual looking plane, but that kind of adds to its appeal. It doesn't get any custom paint jobs or anything, but the default camo's okay. So overall, I give the 109Z pretty good marks for its looks, really just because I like funny looking planes like this. Landing the 109Z is really easy. The plane's unusual layout gives it an even more unusual landing gear arrangement. It has four main wheels in the front and two tail dragger wheels in the back. Compared to the regular 109's narrow undercarriage that makes landing a bit tricky, the 109Z is really easy to set down, and it doesn't have anywhere near as bad nose-over tendencies as its single-engine brother, so just lock up those brakes. The cockpit in the 109Z is a basic BF-109 cockpit but your view to the right is basically blocked by the second fuselage and its fared over cockpit. The 109's visibility was only ever average to begin with, and if I'm being honest, I didn't like flying this plane in VR. To close out on the BF-109Z. This plane has really heavy firepower, with strong cannons and tons of Minengeschoss ammo. It has good high-altitude performance, and it's pretty fast for its BR. However, it's absolutely not a dogfighter. Its cannons are spaced pretty far off the center line, and it only carries one bomb, limiting its potential for close air support. The final verdict is that while the BF-109Z is an effective interceptor, it's not great as a fighter, and it ends up being a bit more meme than meta. As always, thanks for watching.